I think that there's all kinds of ways that we can step into genuine affirmation, but more often than not, we actually need to think about it before we do it. Welcome to Navigation and Discovery with Cameron Singh, where we bring on people and share their stories with hopes that you can learn from their stories. And on today's episode, we have Josh Keller on the podcast. Josh Keller became a good friend of mine through meeting him at one of the uh, retreats that I attend on an annual basis at the Oak Center. And so Josh has been caring for, coaching, and inspiring people for two decades. He's a graduate of the Arrow Leadership Program and studied family ministry. He's also a certified parent coach and also is trained in church trauma care. He was a youth pastor and care pastor for the 19 years and he is currently the spiritual life and advancement director at community christian school he believes deeply that everyone's life has a unique purpose and loves helping people answer some of their biggest questions about god family and life josh also co-founded the freedom center in minnesota with his wife rachel so you are going to enjoy this podcast episode with my good friend josh and really hope you enjoy this podcast episode. All right, well, Josh, uh, you know, it's been an amazing uh, journey since meeting you and uh, really, really look forward to this podcast discussion. And, and thanks for being a part of uh, the podcast. For sure, bro. It's an honor. Yeah, Josh. So uh, let's go take it back a little bit. Uh, let's, um, how did we connect? Yeah, so funny enough, uh, my wife won a contest on Instagram. I don't even know if you knew that. Um, so she won a contest through the Oaks Instagram. So there's a great uh, retreat center in Southern California uh, that's run by an amazing guy named Bob Goff uh, and his team um, called the Oaks. And Rachel loves Bob Goff. My wife, Rachel, does. And um, so she follows him and then she followed the Oaks and then she uh, they asked, they said something about um, nominate someone who uh, has exemplified resiliency um, in their life. And uh, so she nominated me. She put, you know, she did this sweet post about it. And uh, the people at the Oaks picked her, uh, picked her entry. And then so we had like a free, it was like buy one, get one free Oaks uh, retreat weekend. Um, and fortunate enough, we picked the one in March that you attended as well. And uh, it was, uh, I think the real connection happened over uh, lunch on Saturday of that weekend. And God just did something so cool. Um, just in, I feel like connecting us uh, and connecting our hearts just um, from the start. And, uh, and I'm so thankful for it, Cameron. So thankful. It was awesome. Yeah. It was a great weekend. It's really amazing what impact a, uh, a weekend could have when you remove all the worldly stuff and just focus on uh, people. And yeah. uh, I think through that experience, um, man, I've met so many amazing people and I'm so thankful for our friendship since then. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I came, came into that experience at the Oaks with no expectations and came out with some great friends and great relationships that I built over time. So i um, very grateful for that. Yeah, it's super awesome. Yeah. yeah. So um, Josh, uh, you know, we had some amazing conversations over the last few months and uh, probably for about two hours before recording this podcast. Um, and, you know, you, you are in uh, full-time ministry right now. Yeah. Um, so tell us about you. Uh, who you are and how you found your calling towards uh, full-time ministry. Yeah, I was blessed uh, to grow up in a home uh, where my parents loved me and created opportunities for me to be able to um, just experience all kinds of different things from being a merchandiser for Pepsi, stocking shelves, working at a Christian bookstore, uh, working at the North Dakota State Fair, making corn dogs, you know, like I had all these different sort of fun work experiences in my life. But the summer before my senior year in high school, I went on a three and a half week missions experience that included some servant leadership training and, uh, and, uh, and, 
one of the pastors of the church that I had grown up in really started calling out some of my gifts even before that trip. But it was, I spent about three weeks in New York, um, one week on Long Island, and then two weeks, uh, about 25 miles northwest of New York City in a community called Nanuet. And during that time, uh, God began to stir in my heart. And at a follow-up training to that, uh, we had to kind of plan out the next 10 years of our life. And I was 17. It was this exercise um, that the guy who was leading it took us through. And I was struggling so much because I always wanted to be a sports broadcaster. Uh, I wanted to be a sports broadcaster, a PA announcer at big sporting events. Like that was what I wanted to do with my life. I looked at broadcasting schools in New York and was just really dead set. I think this is what I'm going to do. And then God began to change my heart. And, uh, and what's so awesome about that is uh, that during that follow-up training session, I, and we had that exercise, I picked sports broadcasting because the guy who was running, it was like, Hey, maybe you should just pick one. Like, it doesn't mean you have to do it. And my, uh, my response was, okay, well, I'll pick sport, sports broadcasting. And by the end of that exercise, I knew deep within the very fiber of my being that it wasn't, that sports broadcasting is not where I was going to end up. Um, but God was calling me to something different. And so uh, student ministry was that thing. And uh, and so I did student ministry for the better part of about 18 to 20 years. Um, and then starting at age 20, going back out to that same area of New York, to that same church that I was at on that mission trip to help start a student ministry there. And then uh, the journey continued from there to Fargo, North Dakota and Papillion, Nebraska, um, and now to central Minnesota. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it. I I can't say enough. I was in student ministry for about 18 years and now I'm in care ministry, just helping care for people who are hurting and uh, and helping lead people closer to God. So, um, so there you go. There's a little bit of my story. Oh, well, that's awesome. Thank you, Josh. And this next question is kind of going to lead into the, the premise of our discussion. Um, what are some of the challenges that you have faced throughout your journey in, in ministry? Yeah. So I think whether you're involved in like full-time ministry work or you're, you know, uh, a laborer on a construction site or whatever, I think, um, I think we all kind of have a lens that we look at life through and, um, and I think one of the lenses that I look at life through is my love languages and, um, with the reality that as I do premarital counseling for couples, we talk through love languages and more often than not, we are engaged in relationship with people who have different love languages than we do. And so as a result, um, there often can be friction in relationships when we are not caring about people in the way that they want to be cared about. And so one of the things that I think it, in, you know, one of the, one of my main love languages, I think we all love all the love languages. We just like certain ones better, but I think for me, one of my main ones is words of affirmation. And so when I've been in different jobs and different, um, different capacities, one of the things that's been so difficult for me, one a challenge that I've had is being in places um, where I kind of feel like I'm tolerated, not celebrated. And it's not the, it's not like people need to be putting pinatas out every week for me, uh, making me, you know, having celebrations for me, but really it comes down to the fact of being able to call out my gifts and affirm them. And I would say, especially with different leadership, people who have been in leadership over me, I think that's been a challenge for me. Um, it's been, uh, it's been difficult, uh, mainly because I feel like that is one of the ways that I really respond well um, in my work is when the things that I'm doing well are affirmed. But, so, you know, honestly, so one of the things that I have found, you know, I'm 41 years old, um, been married for 15 years, have three kids. You know, one of the things that I have found is that most family cultures, not just business, not just ministry culture, but most family cultures struggle when it comes to affirmation, when it comes to encouragement. So I grew up in a home that was pretty affirming. Um, 
but our culture in general is not affirming. And most of the time, affirmation is just something that happens. It's not necessarily talked about. But my, um, that, that mission trip, that, that three and a half weeks that I spent in New York that summer, part of that servant leadership training that I went through was we had to create something called an affirmation alphabet where we literally had to go through the alphabet and create affirming words for every single um, letter of the alphabet. I got to be real. X was pretty difficult. Um, excellent doesn't start with an X. So the words of affirmation. I So at that point, we had to go through, critically think about this. And then Every facet of the of the training, when someone would do something in front of the group, when someone would do something that was worthy of affirmation, the head of that servant leadership training would say, all right, we're going to stop and we're going to take and we're going to affirm these people right now for what we just saw. So I want you to pull out your affirmation alphabet. And I want you to think about words that would reflect what you just saw in this guy named Andy, right, or whoever it was. And that was a game changer for me. Even though I was, I, I had never been trained to be an encourager. And so my perspective on affirmation and encouragement is different because of that training that I had, but also because I began to step into a lot of environments where people just flat out stunk at encouraging people. Um, and I get it. Some cultures are like, well, I told you you did a good job the first time. I didn't feel like I needed to tell you over and over, but, or whatever it might be. But I think people just uh, struggle with affirmation a lot. And again, it's not just giving it, it's also receiving it. But I think, but I think one, of the th one of the things that has been a challenge to me has been being in environments where the leadership did not value the same thing that I valued. And not just because of how it made me feel, but because of what it does when we actually build cultures of affirmation and how that can be such a game changer for people becoming all that they were meant to be. Yeah, Josh, uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing that. Um, you know, affirmation is, is really so, so critical. It doesn't matter whether you're in business in the marketplace in ministry and very applicable everywhere, but let's take it a step back a little bit. And, um, Let's go back to what affirmation is all about. What does that mean for you and how would you define it? So I think affirmation is encouragement. Um, but I think affirmation requires certain things with it for it to be effective. And I think that I think that um, genuineness is is one of the things that it requires. And I also think that genuine affirmation is only good if it is personal and if it applies to the situation at hand. Um, if all of a sudden I'm throwing out affirmations <laughs> of people that have literally nothing to do with what we're talking about right now, you yeah. know, if I was like, oh, you know, if I said, Cameron, man, you are a calm, collected podcast host, right? Okay. Well, that would be an affirmation that would be genuine and it would, it would be applicable. But if I was like, man, Cameron, I mean, you are just such a persevering marathon runner. And I just, I'm so inspired by your marathon running when we're sitting here having, <laughs> having a podcast conversation about <laughs> affirmation in the job. And then, you know, like it would just feel like out of place. Like, okay, yeah. well, thanks for that. And, um, and I think sometimes we struggle as people to be genuine in our encouragement and timely in our encouragement, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes it's because we're not thinking about it. Like we're surprised about things and then we don't react in time. And then by the time we think about it, then it almost feels like it's too late. But I just want to encourage you, it's never too late for affirmation. It's never too late for encouragement. But there is something to be said about, are we intentionally thinking about the way that we can encourage and challenge one another um, to continue to grow and be more of who God's created you to be? And I think uh, the only way that that's going to happen is if we're 
intentionally thinking about that even as we go into meetings, as we go into conversations, as we go into time that we have with people. Um, and so I think that I think that that's what affirmation is. Affirmation is encouragement, but it also means more mm -hmm. when it's timely and when it's applicable to what is happening in the moment um, or maybe something that just took place. Yeah, that's a good definition there. And why why would you say affirmation is so important in, in our day-to-day -day lives? I think most of the time, if we're being real with each other, we struggle to know when we're doing well, when we're hitting the mark. Um, I think a lot of times we struggle in communication um, in the workplace, at home. Um, and so I think it's important for us to be affirmed in, affirmed when we're doing something well, when we're doing something right, when, when um, someone's feeling encouraged about something that you're doing. And so affirmation is really important in our lives. Because I think I think it's really life-giving. And I think if, if there's one thing <laughs> that's truer than anything else that I might say on this entire podcast, it's this, that I don't think we have enough life-giving sources in our life in general. And I think that God desires for us to use our words to bring life to other people. Um, there's this passage in the book of Ephesians that says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Right? Mm -hmm. Only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And I think that is the heart of affirmation building one another up according to their needs that I may benefit those who listen. You're going to be genuine if you're doing that. You're going to be timely if you're doing that. Um, and so, um, I mean, I have just seen as I've stepped into being someone who affirms others, um, I've just seen how big of a, how big of a difference it makes in people even seeing themselves for who they really are in comparison to who they think other people think they are and maybe even who they're trying to be. So if we, if we could begin to be people who choose the way of affirmation, choose building a culture of affirmation in whatever environments we're in, whether that be around the supper table as a family, whether that be um, with our friends as we're catching up and we haven't seen them in months, um, uh, whether that be at the workplace when we're in staff meetings or team meetings and all of a sudden we um, hear someone report on something and we have the opportunity to speak life into that and say, I mean, what an amazing event that was that you did, that you helped put on. Um, I, I had questions at first as to whether this thing was ever going to get pulled off, but I'm so excited um as i look and see what the results of what happened and you played such a huge role in that and i just can't say enough about how awesome you were during that whole process mm -hmm. it just it just makes people want to keep going um and i think that we need more of that um because i can say like critical feedback is really important but for most people critical feedback isn't the thing that keeps them going unless they're a perfectionist and then they feel like they have to achieve perfection and eventually they're just going to burn out anyway because they're not yeah. going to achieve it. Right. So Josh, so what are the things that you practice in your life to, to provide uh, affirmation? So I think that if we could maybe rephrase that a little bit, um, yeah. just in regards to, I feel like, part of who I am is affirmation. And I think 
I think that people who are affirmation, like they, they just live it out. Um, I think that that point of being genuine and timely is actually really important for them. But I think for the people that struggle with, with um, being encouraging and, and doing that affirmation work, if they're, if they struggle with that, I think that like anything good in our lives, we have to be intentional to build it in. And I know this sounds crazy, but for some people, it might be as simple as literally putting it on the calendar. Like I am going during the next hour to think about ways that I could be encouraging to someone else. Maybe it's the next 10 minutes. And then I'm going to walk out in, onto the floor and look through the cubicles and see someone that I think needs affirmation. And I'm going to think through a way to encourage and affirm them in whatever it might be. I think too, what is it going to take to, to do that? It's just going to take practice and practice and practice and practice. Sometimes you're going to say something to someone and you're going to mean to be encouraging or affirming and it's going to come out terrible. It's going to be like, what do you mean by that? You know? Um, and I think the, the thing that I want to encourage you with is this, um, the more simple that an affirmation can be, the better when you're first starting out. Um, don't get caught up in saying too many words. You know, uh, I just think, okay, so let me, let me just say this. So, um, so I see you, Cameron, you walk into the office and you got this like crisp, blue suit on and it is looking just good and I could say to you hey Cameron wow you are looking good in that suit and I can keep it simple now again I think that affirmation should be more personal than just what someone's wearing but for this case in point let me just say this now I could say that or I could say Cameron you are looking so good in that blue suit I mean it looks so much better than all your other suits like way better like I don't know what was wrong with those, but man, this one is really good. Like I think <laughs> sometimes we just get really awkward because we, yeah. we're not good at it. We don't know what to say, but I think the more, the more personal, the more timely, the affirmation, the better that it's going to be. So, so even when it comes to just, uh, even, uh, even, even thinking through what does someone value? So like, Let's say that Cameron, you really valued um, time management and time management was very important to you. And I knew that you valued time management. Um, and we're sitting around a table, an executive table in the, the, we're talking about this project that you've been doing and you got it done and you were super efficient for me to look at you and go, Cameron, I am inspired by the way that you manage your time. It would have taken me a month longer to get that project done. But the way that you got that done in the time that you did inspires me to be more efficient with my time. So thanks for doing that for me. I know that you didn't do that for me in that process, but, but that's what it did for me. And so thank you. You inspired me. Um, I think that there's all kinds of ways that we can step into genuine affirmation, but more often than not, we actually need to think about it before we do it. That's true. And so uh, like anything else in life, for the most part, like anything good is probably going to be well thought through. And so, so how can we just be more thoughtful about, about our affirmation of other people? Um, and so thoughtful, timely, intentional, personal, like those are things that um, that are really important if we want to be good at affirmation. But I think some of it is just actually just starting to do it. Like, just do it. Like, if you're someone that doesn't tell your kids that you love them very often, start telling your kids you love them more. They need to hear it. Mm -hmm. If you're someone that um, doesn't tell your wife that she looks nice very often or tell your husband that he looks nice very often, maybe he doesn't, ladies. I, but maybe you just need to like start saying it more, like start thinking, I need to say this to my wife more. I need to say this to my husband more. I need to say this to 
my kids more. Guys, over and over and over in life, I've seen that we experience so much more discouraging feedback in our lives than we do encouraging feedback. And I don't know about you, but I am not motivated by discouraging feedback. In fact, it just makes me feel like uh, I'm just missing it. Maybe I need to be doing something else. We all need critical feedback, but we need way more encouraging feedback than we do critical feedback. And I get it. You're probably sitting there thinking about the one person who like, you can't think of one positive thing to say about them. I got one of those people in my life. There are positive things that you can say about them. And they maybe need to hear it from you more than anybody else. This isn't some sort of, and again, I'm not against Tony Robbins, but this isn't some sort of Tony Robbins, hoo ha ha, you know, let's feel good about ourselves thing. He probably doesn't even do that. But, but, but it's literally about helping people see the good and step into more of who God's made them to be. Um, I think that we were created to be encouragers, not discouragers. But we aren't going to have encouragers unless more of us step into becoming encouragers. Um, and so we need to do that. And so we just need sometimes need to step into it, even if it's awkward. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I like what you mentioned, intentionality. Intentionality is so important when given that affirmation, because if you're not being intentional, thoughtful, like you mentioned, um, I mean, it's just going to be, oh, nice shirt or nice shoes. <laughs> but where you really start making the impact is when you're, when you start putting some thought and intentionality into it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's another element that I wanted to touch on. And we actually just kind of chatted about this before the podcast uh in uh, interview is receiving affirmation and i think for me i struggle with that one and we we did we talked about that um so josh so you gave me some affirmation in our lengthy discussion before the interview and i intentionally did not respond i i did not respond i just smiled and that was it so Let's let's talk a little bit about that. And like we can go back what what you said. I even forgot what you said. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. You blocked you it out, bro. You blocked <laughs> it out. You you were like, I can't take this. I can't take this. So I one of the things that I really appreciate about Cameron, and this I, I said this to him earlier. One of the things I really appreciate about Cameron is Cameron is a well learned man and that might be a weird way of saying it but Cameron Cam, Cameron is a constant learner he's reading he's listening he's going I mean I don't know I don't know anybody who goes to more leadership orientated events than you Cameron um and you you have a wealth of knowledge um but you have a way of communicating that knowledge uh that is humble and not trying to lord that over anybody else. Um, you just have a way that you really try and um, use it as a point of connection more than a point of uh, exerting yourself as some sort of supreme being because of all you know. Yeah. And so that just uh, means a lot to me as we're sitting even having a conversation. Um, and... And so as, as I'm giving that affirmation, Cameron just sits there and doesn't say anything. <laughs> and then I just sit there and don't say anything. <laughs> and it gets real awkward real quick. And I think sometimes there are obstacles to healthy affirmation happening. I mean, honestly, imagine Cameron, if I was taking a risk, I'm not a natural affirmer. Mm -hmm. and so I take the risk to step out and say something nice to you about yourself. And then you literally say nothing back. I'm probably not going to try that again. Right now, I should not bank what I what I, I should not base what I do on cam on someone else's response, right on Cameron's right. response. But my natural tendency as a human being is, oh, man, that must not have worked. 
crap. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't say nice things to people, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> like I don't know why he didn't say anything, but he didn't even say anything to me. Like, but but is it right for me to even have an expectation that he would say something to me, right? Yeah. Um, and so that was a very unique situation. But then as we processed it, you you came clean and were like, I don't really do well with affirmation. Um, and there was a variety of reasons why, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and so some of this comes down to the fact that like, we need, we need to be able to receive affirmation as much as we want to give affirmation. I know people that will give affirmation all day long, but they will not receive it. And so Cameron, I think some of the core reasons why people struggle with this, and we, you, you had mentioned this one, you'd mentioned insecurity, right? Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes in that insecurity, we, we struggle to believe the things that people say about us that are good. If people say things that are like degrading or mean to us about ourselves, we may take those on. But with affirmation, we struggle because we don't believe that there could be like that much good in us that that person is saying. Whether you're trustworthy, you're kind, you're thoughtful, you're selfless, mm -hmm. um, you're fearless, you know? And then we overanalyze, well, I'm not fearless. I'm scared of a lot of things. If you put a lion in front of me, I'm going to be really scared. You know, yeah. you don't know what you don't know what I'm like when it comes to heights or, you know, all these sorts of things that we just begin to overanalyze it. And I think um, sometimes we we live in fear of affirmation. Like that's, that's if true. I accept that affirmation, I'm not being genuine because that really isn't who I am. And man, that can be really hard. Yeah. I think for me, when you mentioned that, when you provided me that affirmation, um, yet I guess for me is I don't really strive towards doing what I'm doing for affirmation, but when you gave me that affirmation, it gave me more so confirmation mm -hmm. it, because it confirmed what you were saying. And so I was kind of at peace, but I think one thing that you mentioned is when receiving that affirmation, you have to feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think sometimes I don't know how to feel it because I haven't had it. You know? Mm. Like, so someone says something affirming to me, but they've never said something encouraging me to, to me ever before. And so I question the genuineness of it. And I don't really know if I and trust what they're saying. And so the feeling is not a good one. But if I, but if I can be a person who gains trust with other people and then speaks life into those people, they are going to be able to receive that affirmation so much better because there's a relationship there. That's true. Right. So, I mean, when you and I have a relationship, we're not best friends. Mm -hmm. So, like, me affirming you in that way. Um, I mean, I think about the first real conversation that we ever had. And, like, Cameron, you were so brave. You were so brave mm -hmm. to open up and to share your heart and share your experience. And, and my wife and I just looked at each other and we're like, I can't believe it. He just shared that with us. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. But, but if you, but for me to look you in the eyes at that point and be like, Cameron, you are just so brave. Like, I mean, you're like, you don't even know me. <laughs> like, I guess maybe that was a brave step, but I'm not a brave person, you know? Yeah. But, but affirmation means the most when someone has built a relationship with us, knows us, and then can speak into that, speak into whatever that area of affirmation is. And so so I think too, if we haven't gotten affirmation from someone, it sometimes can be awkward to receive it. But remembering as people, what we long for more than anything is relationship. And so in that relationship will come a, 
um, a freedom to receive that maybe we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I just want to encourage people. Yes, we can struggle to, to receive affirmation and we need to feel affirmation um, when it comes because affirmation is always something that's encouraging. Right. Like that, that is a, that's a key cog in the wheel of affirmation is that it's, is that it's an, it's an encouraging word. So try and feel it as best as you can for those that struggle and they're not feelers, then try and process it in a logical way. Um, but sometimes our own logic gets in the way and keeps us from actually believing that that's true about ourselves. But I think it's so, so, so important that we take an active step to be people who build relationships so that when we bring genuine, um, timely, intentional affirmation, um, that then people have a a greater ability to receive it. Mm -hmm. And I think it starts with intentionality with relationships because we are in this, I don't even know what to call it, this hurried lifestyle where we are encountering so many people in our day-to-day lives. And um, one thing that blocks us is technology of all sizes, shapes, and forms. Of course, the phone. And oftentimes, I've realized I've missed opportunities because technology was in the way or the busyness was in the way. And I'm sure everyone listening, we all experience it, that busyness. We do to ourselves and our families. We just get into this busy lifestyle and just dropping it all, getting on the phone, getting coffee with someone. And when you're meeting with someone, keeping technology away and having that intentionality in that relationship or relationships and truly genuinely connecting with people. I think that's where all this starts is really like doing what what we've done josh over the you know even post um being at the oaks is just connecting because i think that value is is still lost Mm -hmm. still lost today so you talk about technology right so there are different things that keep us right whether it's a it's emotional things like insecurity or fear um and then physical things maybe even like technology but sometimes it's how those things are utilized too. Mm-hmm. Rachel and I have an amazing group of friends, people that we really do life with. One of those friends is uh, an Instagram influencer and uh, does just the most amazing, beautiful, her and her husband DIY work. It's just awesome. And they have a guest house that's attached to their house. And uh so Allie's her name and she was showing, um, you know, she was po- posting pictures on her Instagram of the guest house and just some re- refurbishing that they had done on the guest house. And I mean, Cameron, like I would live in this guest house. Like, I mean, if I was a single person, I would live in this guest house. It's it's incredible. It's beautiful. It's so homey. Um, feels like it's from Magnolia, Right. But someone posted, someone put in the comments on the post that she had made, um, just the most critical comment. Uh, they, they said, why would you ever build a guest house without a bathroom in the guest house? That mm. just seems so useless. Like, that's just pointless. Why would you ever do something like that? You know? Um, and there was, I feel like there was even more to that, to that comment than that, but we just like kind of chuckled about it because we were like, there is so much good to be found in that guest house, but someone had to go negative. Yeah. If you look at me in my life, there will be way more negative things that you could comment on than positive just like anybody else in your life. But the call is to build one another up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Right? Right. So so 
being negative just to be negative. I mean, dude, all the time I find myself writing like starting a comment on Twitter or starting a comment on Instagram and like just erasing it because I'm like, what is even the point? It's not like it's not like this person with three million followers cares about a thing that I have to say anyway. You know, uh, I don't need to I don't need to go negative on these people. And so I think that um, let's be less of the negative guest house commenter. And let's be more of calling out the beauty in things and in people. Um, because uh, we're called to build one another up according to their needs. Mm-hmm. And that may benefit those who listen. Yeah. yeah. And that's how we really share the love of people and love on people. And that's what we're all called to, to be doing. And mm-hmm. that's, that's the basis of um, what we believe in is it's simply just love on people. Yeah. There's a place in love for truth. Yes. So like, we can't like, we can't just like, because I think people, I, I think people will struggle with that idea of like, well, you know, some people just need tough love from me or whatever. And I'm just like, here's the thing. People need to be encouraged in what they're doing right. I I mess up with this all the time. Uh, I think especially with my oldest son, my oldest son, I I feel like I, 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 I think a lot of him and I want a lot for him. He's 13 years old, going to be 14 soon. But I find myself more often than not apologizing to him because I'm so much quicker to bring critical feedback than I am to bring encouraging feedback. Mm -hmm. What he needs right now in his life is he needs to be encouraged. Yes. Do I need to talk to him about his room and getting his clothes put away and hang up his towel after he uses his shower and name all the things, right? But what does he need? Yeah. He needs to be encouraged with real things, real amazing things that he's doing in his life. And so I got to be looking for those. Right? He's mean to his sister. It's going <laughs> to happen. But but how much more intense am I reacting to the good in his life than I am the negative? And that can be our kids, that can be our boss, that could be our parents, that could be our siblings, that could be our neighbors when they're not mowing their lawn in time and I'm getting grouchy about it. Man, but they're giving their lives to this and that. And why can't I encourage them about that rather than being discouraged about the fact that their lawn doesn't look as nice as mine, which P.S. will never be said about me ever. But <laughs> but just as an example, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the things like the way I provide, I try to do as much affirmation as I can, um, but I really only do it through one outlet. I, I don't, I don't do a good job. Like, I'll, you know, like I'll never say I'm proud of you, Josh, because that's exactly how it'll come out. I'm proud of you, Josh. That it's not like oh, I'll say it excitedly, you know. I'm proud of you, Josh. No, it, it will never come out just because just the way I am. And so I find that a lot of my affirmation comes through, whether it's uh, written through an email, a text message, or maybe even public affirmation on social media. Like I just went to a leadership conference. One of my good good pastor friends hosted a, a conference. And I thought, you know, in order to provide affirmation, I send him a text after the conference, like really good job putting it on. And then I did a public affirmation, a social media post on it. And uh, those are my ways that I display like affirmation. Um, so yeah. I think one of the ways, I think one of the ways, so by the way, Cameron, yeah, the thing that we talk about, about connection. Yeah. If I have a relationship with you and you say that out loud to me, I'm going to know you. And I'm going to know that even though it maybe sounds a little bit awkward. Yeah. That you mean it. And so I just want to, I just want to encourage you and I want to encourage anyone else what 
what a lot of this is, is it's a call to connection. And one way that we connect really well with other people, any one of us, is by asking curious questions. So if I want to affirm my wife's dinner that she's making, I think she's making dinner now. I have no idea, but let's just say she's making dinner. <laughs> and I want to affirm what she's making. I could look at her and say, hey, Rach, thanks for making dinner. That was really thoughtful of you. I know you had a long day. You saw a lot of clients, and but it means a lot that I was recording this podcast and you you just, you took the initiative and you made dinner. That That means a lot to me. Now that's affirming. But what if I'm sitting at the table and I look at her and I say, Rach, what, what seasonings did you use in this meal tonight? Well, I used oregano and cayenne and whatever, right? Like she just lists and some curry powder and did you like use a recipe or no, no, I was just kind of throwing it in. This is my whole, who my wife is hundred <laughs> percent. I was just throwing it in and just kind of taking it and it tastes a little bit, whatever. I'm like, Rach, thanks for keeping our life full of spice and life and not just sort of a bland natural thing. You spice our life up so much. And like, we need that. And that I just love it more than just this meal. I just love that about you. Okay, which one feels better? The and, which, and which one is more complete? The second one. Yeah. So how, how we affirm is crucial, when we affirm is crucial. Um, but I think just stepping into it in any way you can. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we are going to be better with our words and we, we feel like it's better if we just write something out. Awesome. Do it. Start there. But don't stop there. Because people do need to hear it from your voice. Mm -hmm. um, and so start where you are, but understand affirmation and encouragement are, is, it's a constant journey. It's a lifelong journey of, of living out that call to build one another's up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Um, and when we do that, um, we're changing lives. Think about the last time that someone said something to you that meant a lot. And then think about how long of a gap there was between that one and the previous one. And then think about how big of a difference it would make if you would have people in your life that on a consistent basis spoke into you the things that are true about you, true about your effort, true about what you're doing, true about who you are in a world that's constantly trying to tell us who we should be and what we should do. We have the opportunity to change people's lives forever mm -hmm. simply by saying one thing <laughs> at the right time, intentionally, you know, um, because we were looking for opportunities to do it. Yeah. And sometimes it just takes that one act of affirmation to change a life. It doesn't even need to be multiple. It's just that one thing. And I mean, I remember even through, through my journey, you know, being in my twenties where there are snippets of affirmations that I remember over time from certain people that you never forget. And I know you probably have some in your life too, Josh. There's certain snippets that you just cherished and kept close to your heart. And that those are the things that keep you going. And so you'd never know just by that one affirmation where that could take that person or how long that, that person is going to remember that affirmation. Yeah, I had a, the first time I ever spoke publicly at the church that I grew up in, it was just uh, sharing about a mission trip that I had gone on. And so I got up and I shared, and then I really challenged the church to get involved in this thing that we were doing as a church because um, it was going to make a difference in the lives of kids. And 
Um, they didn't ask me to do that. I just did it. And after I was done, I walked backstage. And there was a, wom a woman in her 70s standing there who had helped start the church back when she was young. And her name was Marlene. And Marlene looked at me and she said, young 16-year-old Josh, and she looked at me and she said, Josh, wow, that was just like a young Billy Graham up there. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that we talked about, Cameron, earlier is perspective. We got to have perspective when people affirm us, right? Like yes, yeah. in that moment, I knew that was not Billy Graham, right? <laughs> like I knew it. But those words, I mean, seriously, that is 25 years ago. You know how many conversations I've had in 25 years? You know how many I don't remember? Mm. Marlene Peterson rocked my world that day. She didn't have to say anything to me. But she spoke life into me. Like that meant so much to me. And so the words that we say and the things that we do um, can, can make a difference in people's lives for the good. Yeah. And so let's be people that do that. Let's be people that do that. I'm challenged, man. I'm challenged in this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm challenged when I put my kids to bed tonight to to affirm them differently, to, to talk to my wife differently when she's making dinner, you know, like even in this conversation, I'm encouraged. So I think, I think these conversations are so important um, because they move us more towards who we were created to be. And this is obviously just one facet of life, but it is a facet that literally can change people's lives. I think about it. I think about the student that I had that um, a year ago, year and a half ago, completed suicide. None of us knew that he was struggling with that. None of us, not his parents, not anybody. It was like out of nowhere, no note. And I think about what he needed and he probably needed a lot. But I think about him like, man, well, what did Caden need to hear? Who did he need speaking into his life? We literally have the ability, I believe, by the words that we say, to give or to take life. And so, as we, I mean, as I am challenged today, your challenge today even listening to this um how can we intentionally genuinely connectingly use our words to bring life and in turn bring life to other people um yeah my heart's moved yeah yeah, it, yeah it's even challenged me to think you know what areas in my life or which people specifically do I need to provide more affirmation for because I already have three or four names in the top of my head and <laughs> we all need it but we all need it but we also need to give it you know you know who oftentimes needs affirmation the most yeah the people who we think need it the least oh yeah so like, Cameron, you're, I don't think I'm being, so you're around some pretty successful people, mm -hmm. people whose bank accounts will be 5 million times more than mine ever will be, right? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we look at different people and we're like, oh man, they, they got it figured out. They, they're doing well. They, no, <laughs> no, they're just like us. Um, in the fact that they need encouragement, they need people speaking life into them. 
they need to know what they're doing right. Um, and so we can look around us and see discouraged people like that student I, I talked about, um, if we can see it, you know, in his case, we couldn't, but uh, we didn't know, but, but there are people around us that are naturally that we look at them and go, oh, man, they really need to be encouraged. They really need to be built up. Mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes it's the people that we think need it the least that actually maybe need it the most. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I really enjoyed this this uh, discussion on affirmation. It's uh, I think it's it's probably challenged both of us, and I know listeners are probably want you know, like, wow, this is like really really a cool discussion. Um, yeah. And I think it's so needed in our culture today, mm -hmm. especially when there's so much opposition and negativity out there, and people are quick to judge and say negative things. Mm -hmm. um and so i think it's a much much needed discussion and i really hope for those listening out there really really enjoyed uh this this conversation on affirmation mm -hmm. affirmation uh tears down barriers mm -hmm. it really does mm -hmm. uh, whereas um oftentimes tough love truth mentality creates barriers um I, I had this, I, I want to, um, I got to reference something that I, I preached the other week. I know that we're wrapping up here, but, um, so I think that sometimes in, um, life we feel like people need, I, I had referenced earlier that people need tough love. Um, they, they need me, they need me to tell them the truth. Um, and I think that sometimes we think that truth trumps love. Yeah. Um, and to that, I say, I believe that truth becomes receivable with love. Um, without love, as First Corinthians uh, 13 says, I'm a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Um, and my guess is on your Spotify or Apple Music playlist, you don't have resounding gong or clanging cymbal uh, in any of your playlists. <laughs> um, and so that idea that I, that, that truth trumps love. No, um, truth becomes receivable with love. And so the more that we can bring genuine affirmation to people, mm -hmm. the more that they're going to be open, um, to receiving, uh, to receiving truth when it's needed. Hmm. That's so yeah, good. Difficult, difficult truth. Difficult truth. Maybe is a better. Yeah. Word. Yeah. That's so good. Um, so as we kind of wrap up, Josh, man, I really enjoyed, enjoyed this, this conversation. Um, you uh, are part of a new venture. And I just wanted to touch on that briefly, because I think it's, it, this is so relevant in, in our world today, um, is the Freedom Center. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, my wife and I last June 13th opened uh, mental health a practice called the Freedom Center MN. We're in Minnesota, central Minnesota again, uh, in Wilmer, Minnesota, and uh, really believing that there is a um, way to help people clinically um, with a Christ Center worldview. And um, people don't have to be followers of Jesus to come to our our place. They, they in fact, a lot of people aren't. Um, but we've just uh, been able to step into this really cool opportunity to help people on a mental health uh, level um, because uh, in our world today, uh, there is uh, a mental health crisis happening. And, um, and so it's been really cool just to be able to, to step into that uh, with my wife. She's just a rock star. She's a, um, a clinical counselor herself. And, uh, and so um, it's been cool with her and our other our other team members um, that we have. Uh, we have four therapists and a licensed psychologist who works with us, and um, so it's been a really cool opportunity to be able to step in and uh, work with kids as people as young as four and as old as I don't know eighty four probably. Um, so that's been a really cool cool venture for us. It's been probably the biggest. Um, faith over fear step that we've ever taken in our lives. Um, but we've just been blessed 
uh, with people around us who have supported us and have stepped in in ways that we could have never, or we could have never seen this thing come to fruition without them. And so it's been really, really, really cool. And thank you for the work that you and your family are doing with that, because it's, it's so much needed in our society today, especially what we've gone through over the last I don't even know, three, four years. It's it's just a, a topic that um, I'm very passionate about as well. And um, it's it's becoming a, a topic or in, I don't even know how to say a topic issue state that um, people are starting to shed light to and say, hey, I, I do need some help. I And it's okay to get help. And that's something that I truly believe in uh, is that if if you need an outlet seeking help is the way to go and it's okay to go and get help. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we, sometimes, you know, in some cultures there's sort of this mentality that like, I just need to tough it out. I just need to yeah myself up by my bootstraps and keep going. And, um, you know, the word insanity is often referenced in mental health circles. Um, on a real level. Um, but oftentimes how people define insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when we try and handle things on our own, um, more often than not, uh, we end up going backwards. And so I, I, but I would say this, I would say be cautious in who you go to for mental health help. Mm -hmm. Um, because like any profession, there are good mental health therapists and um, there are terrible mental health therapists. Um, it just like in any profession, you know, whether it's a plumber or an electrician, a, a concrete pourer, whoever. And so um, vet people before you go see them um, because uh, you want to make sure that you're connecting with someone who shares your values um, and also someone who is a good therapist who's going to help you walk through it um, not tell you what to think about it, you know. Well, thank you, Josh. And I guess um, maybe I can provide you some affirmation, some public verbal affirmation, which I normally don't do. Uh, you know, Josh, thank you for, you know, I never thought that our friendship would come off something post Oaks. Um, so it's it's been awesome to develop an awesome friendship, even though we live in different parts of the country. And, you know, one thing I have to say, which a lot of people don't give is their time. Mm. So I'm very thankful of the time that you, you've allocated um, for this friendship to, to flourish. Um, and I only think we've only talked a handful of times. It hasn't even been like, we don't talk every day, but uh, I mean, just those times that, that we have spoken to and even today you know just talking two hours before the podcast interview I don't take that lightly so thank you thank you for for all the time I mean I know even your family's home right now and you have a handful right three kids a dog and a, and a wife so I, I appreciate that you're welcome bro thank you for that yeah yep sweetness well thanks for your time Cameron and, uh, and I really pray that this uh, is an encouragement um, to people as they seek to maybe live outside themselves a little bit more and uh, and live in the scope of building one another up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Josh. And uh, for those listening, uh, thanks for tuning in and listening to the podcast. Um, really hope this really adds value to your life. And um, uh, thanks again for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Navigation and Discovery with Cameron Singh. I really hope my interview with Josh Keller really helped you and added value to where you are at in life and hope that from this interview that you're able to, to take something away. And that's what this whole podcast is truly about. So thank you again for all your support. And um, if you haven't heard yet, my book is out, Navigation and Discovery. Um, it's my first ever book. So if you could, uh, please support me in terms of, uh, purchasing a book or gifting this copy to someone that you may feel that might need to hear, uh, the message of this book to help them 
navigate and discovery through their journey of life. And so you can find out more at CameronSingBook.com. And also you can find out more about me and connect with me at CameronSing.com. And those links are in the podcast description on whichever platform you are listening on. So thank you again for all your support and feel free to go back and listen to some of the previous episodes. There's been a lot of interesting people from different walks of life. And so really hope that you're able to check some of that out. And also please subscribe. You'll be the first one to uh, get notified when a new episode goes live. And also feel free to give a rating. And if you're on Spotify, feel free to answer, uh, ask any questions or provide any comments and also on Apple Podcasts as well. Thank you again for all your support and we'll catch you on the next episode.